minimalism. What does it mean? What is the definition of this? Why should we take things and just compress them into one entity, one belief, one religion? Why can't we just go and grab the best out of everything? Today, I want to talk to you guys about minimalism. I got Mama Strega on board here. And we're just going over of the things that we can do to make our lives easier and make something happen with that the way it fits you and you individually. We can't expect one pill for every ill and for just something to fit everybody. So this is just an exploration of what minimalism means to us, how we've incorporated it into our lives. Learn a few things today of, of how mindset is everything, how to incorporate such things as bartering uh, and our experience of doing that in a minimalistic life, how routines can better or worsen your life. And let's just jump right into it. Hey, welcome to another edition of Up and In It. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're wondering what the show is about, it's 100% about designing a lifestyle better for people, better for planet, exploring alternatives to the daily grind through liberation and independence, moving from surviving to thriving and living life raw. Good morning from Southern California. I got my water. That means you're going to edit this out. My great good morning with the coffee. Uh, not happy coffee. Happy some whiskey oh well just stick with what is i think uh like we were saying that how everything turns into a religion in particular well it's everything but the one in particular we're looking at is like minimalism basically how to how to uh manage your life design your life and everything and grabbing the best of everything and not being what's the word i'm looking for like uh biased i guess it gets fitting into one thing like we're just the Addicted. minimalist and then in competition and then with yourself and with others well one of the biggest benefits i find in the beginning of minimalism is by sifting through your mind and asking yourself is minimalism for me and why would it be what would be the the greatest benefit in the beginning is the less you have the less you have to worry about yeah lighten your stress load your concern load and that leaves you free to continue the the journey and looking at it more as a, a fun hobby and like a challenge to yourself you know like people do all these challenges of fasts and all that you know yoga and all these things which are awesome but it's a fun challenge to go huh all of a sudden you start looking at everything differently like tools you have machines you have you know kitchen machines and gadgets and gizmos you start looking at things differently like oh how, how beneficial is that how much better would it be to be without it maybe even like can i make get rid of three things and buy one thing that's multi-purpose for example mm -hmm. takes up less space mental and physical I mean, you minimize time spent like on social media is it important to have 3,000 friends <laughs> how the hell are you supposed to stay in contact with 3,000 how, how are you supposed to remember who they even are you know all these different things like I said that take up your time and your energy so I feel that it's important in the beginning to look at your mental approach to anything, minimalism, non-minimalism. Yeah. Why do you have as many things as you have? Why would you not want to have them? So it's a, it's a fun game you get to play with yourself about, well, what do I want to change and why do I want to change it? And the best part is change it, try it. You don't like it, go back to what you were doing. You can always go back. That's why I love that idea. They said they just pack everything up in boxes and put it in a room. You don't have to get rid of it. Just put it someplace and then right. pull out what you need only as you need it. But it's, it's like Christmas if you open it up again. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. But I love the idea of grabbing not just minimalism, but like it says everything. Like, what is what are the things that work for you? Like, we can't compartmentalize everybody, a pill for every ill. And it's like, well, what what works for you? What a wonderful time to have so much information. Like, you know, and it goes off in all kinds of stuff: stoicism and you know, health and minimalism and permaculture and natural farming and all kinds of philosophies and simple living so what an interesting time that i think like i think both of us are doing is we're hybridizing our lives grabbing the best of the best we don't you don't have to classify yourself or go to a minimalist church or you know yeah what works for you and what doesn't well like i said to me keep it light in the game it's fun to meet other people who are on that same journey and like hey what are you doing you know and they mm -hmm. give you ideas you give them ideas and inspire each other to, to think of things differently yeah it's just so crazy that see, there's that's I think that's what I'm experiencing. I think you as well is like when you on your trip is like you went out and you got work. Like right now, if you decided, hey, I want to go over there and change this shit up because you have a minimalistic, simple life approach, you're able yeah. to just get the fuck out of here and go. Yeah, but we got overhead. rid of the fear though. It's like yeah, it's kind of like wow, I didn't really know 
and I feel the same way with Mia. It's like I'm, we're still in September and I'm not working, and it just feels like there's a whole nother way of life out here. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do the. Well, I'm like that's where I'm going after we podcast is I'm going to do a small job for a former client as a small drywall repair. You know, make some gas money, whatever. You know, see what happens. Hopefully, they talk to other people, let them know I'm, I'm in town. So anywhere I go, just let people know I'm in town. I'm coming to town, and uh, see what happens. Yep, doing things different. I think like our conversation this morning is not getting a. Why the hell is everybody so scared of to try things and to fail? I think you're asking me about my burlap, or maybe it's part of stress. I'm like, no, I think it's more excitement, and the, the stress is not really there of failure. Like, it just feels weird for me to. Like, and I see things like with you traveling around, I, I had the thoughts like, I'll bet you you can meet people and you can get a network, a community. There it goes, it happens. I didn't experience, I didn't have to experience it. Mm. Somebody else showed me the information. There's so much stuff out there that you'll never know until you try. And what is that, that fear of failure and when all things happen because of that, you know? To me, that boils down to the illusion of security. Mm -hmm. When people think you buy a house, you own that house. No, the bank owns that house. You buy a brand new car, yeah. eh, the bank owns that too. You're making payments. Basically, you're kind of renting it, you know, even though you can build equity in, in your house, things like that. But still, the crash of a wave proved that to be a, a little bit uh, insecure. And that we may have one coming now. Mm -hmm. Well, and the big deal isn't what you have, it's what you do with what you have. Yeah. I've always found it fascinating. I've done uh, jobs off and on working for extremely wealthy people who have large storage units of things they don't even remember what's in it. Yeah. And they'll just be like, hey, can you just go through it, get rid of stuff, you know? And then what do they do as soon as it's cleaned out? Start accumulating more. Yeah. You know, so there's a sense of security. I own all this, I have this. So it's, there's a sense of security towards your future, but how secure is that when you go to leave somewhere like on vacation, most people, you know, and I, I experienced the same thing. I had a house and property and business and all that. It's more work to get ready to leave for a week or two. Mm -hmm. It takes you three, four days to decompress and download like, okay, everything's taken care of. You can relax, you know, <gasps> okay, breathe, breathe, breathe. You know, oh, I should make a phone call and check and make sure everything's all right. You're constantly like worried and concerned. You know, again, you know, this lifestyle isn't exactly zero stress either. You know, you get to a point where a oh, kitty's getting skinny. Time yeah. to put some something, time to feed the kitty. What am I going to do? So what are some of the cons in your, your life? Like, what would we call this, like, just simple living? Well, the difficulty in traveling with everything I own in my vehicle. Trying to stay organized. Yeah. Trying to, to be able to get hold of what I need and... and like when I left, I'm from here the first time back in May, I intended to possibly move to Colorado, possibly spend the winter in Colorado, which means very cold snow weather. So better have enough warm blankets and clothing, all these things, you know, that you're gonna need. What kind of work might you be doing? Work clothes, play clothes. Yeah. You know, different things like that. And then also the fact of camping sometimes so making sure you've got the things you need to do that to feed yourself it seems like organization is in everything disorganization is one of for in my philosophy is the root of a lot of the stress would i say all of it no but the big part and it doesn't go in just to, into material things yeah. or money it actually goes in your thoughts how you think and everything too are you able to finish a thought as i always say mm -hmm. but the disorganization and all this stuff is really that's where I'm at right now. That's one of my cons is I'm like, I've been so busy on working on my internet business and going out, farting off and having a good time and just leaving things go. The, and the mice, that's what they just taught me, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, it's time to clean shit up. Yeah, time, while, time while to you're get a, busy building your empire, we started building yeah. ours. Yeah, and they're having a heyday. They always do. So that's where I like the idea of minimalism is all the stuff that you have, the least amount of things you have, you can manage what you what you own, it doesn't end up owning you as much. <laughs> the things well, you own end up owning again, you. Well, and again, on the way, you lose things. Things get stolen sometimes, things yep. get borrowed, you forget they borrowed them, they don't get returned. So there you are, like ready to go do something, you go to grab that thing and you're like, uh, okay, where'd that go? Yeah. You know, so there are stresses, life is filled with stresses of different levels, it's how do you handle and respond to that stress. 
prepare yourself, you know, like to me, creative visualization is like, okay, you know, the fear of say going on the road, what is the worst possible case scenario, the worst thing that could happen and then yeah. prepare for it. And that way when you do take off in the back of your mind is, well, no shit, it's the fan. I've got a backup plan or two or 10. Mm -hmm. Planning is a big with me too. When you have some plans, then you don't have to sit there and worry. Yeah. What am I going to do with this? What am I going to do with that? And I think the one thing I learned is write it down. Mm -hmm. Write your fucking plans down because you'll get lost in the in the trauma of life and the hurricanes and and all the stress. Yeah. And then if you look back, it's almost like a like a satellite, a map. It just goes, oh, that's why you're doing it. Yeah, it's fun too because like I have notebooks. I'm still old school. Notebook and pen is one of my favorites. I love to write. I love language. I love the act of writing. But uh, going through these notebooks and like. I forgot that I had them, and it was mm -hmm. plans from a couple of years ago before I was going to go to Slab City, and I was going out and visiting back and forth and studying camps while I was there and asking people, like, you know, if you could rebuild your camp, what, what would you do and why? Yeah. You know, wind factor, dust factor, all these different things, and so I took notes, and then I started to plan my camp. Then once I got there, I continued. And it's been that way everywhere I've been in different places I've lived where I bartered, you know, taking care of things for people or doing maintenance on things and and you know how could I do this more efficiently so it's really fun to me to go back through and go oh my gosh look at the things I actually accomplished and how well it turned out and then look at some of those things I wanted to do that never happened but yeah. I at least it was it was interesting to plan it and figure out what possible problems could arise and possible solutions so it's like keep using that brain you know they say that's the biggest enemy of memory and age is people stop using their brain yeah. Stop using your memory, you know, especially if you do the same thing over and over again by rote. After a while, you stop even thinking about it, you know, like say if you're old and you live in the same neighborhood for 30, 40 years, all you remember, turn left at Chevron, turn right at the market and you're at the post office. So this, they stop paying attention to road names mm -hmm. and things like that, for example. But that's why I think this day and age, living in an, in an age like I like video games, simple video games, not war or whatever, but it, it gets the mind cooking in the morning, gets the juices flowing. And uh, again, it teaches you to be efficient in your thought process and in your how efficient your brain works. Yeah. This morning was interesting, though, because I did a uh, post, I think. Yeah, this morning's uh, podcast, uh, Monday here, was about morning six morning routines to make your day better. And it was the same thing, writing down... Um, breathing exercises and creative visualization and, mm -hmm. and all of these things, supplements you want to take or something. But I learned, that what I figured was that it, routines in some ways are good. Like for me, waking up every morning and people say, don't, the worst thing you can do is get on your phone. I'm like, no, you look at your notes. I get up and to remind myself, hey, there's these six things that I need, that I should, not need to do, but I should do, and I can do, do them if I want it or not. But when you get in the yeah. routine, of every morning, like I have a little bit of salt I gotta put back on my bed. I put a little bit of, of uh, rock salt on the, underneath my tongue yeah. to help me rehydrate from the night and everything. And it's healthy for you and there's reasons I won't go into, but there's just little things like that that are kind of nice. And also that, like you and I have been talking a lot is, um, I always get a lot lost for words on this, but um, rituals, yeah, of things. Mm -hmm. How important that is to, so you don't forget. Yeah. I don't know, it's the same thing, it's the same pattern, but it seems like it's nice to have an equilibrium, of, of, a balance between the two. Well, that is also an interesting psychological thing too, though, because like when I was working out at the gym, working out with a trainer, he said that one of the main reasons people hurt themselves in a gym is because of routine. Mm -hmm. That your brain, again, will go into rote, and you always do it this way, you do cardio, you do that, that, you stop paying attention, and little by little, you know, which is the purpose of mirrors in a gym is to mark your path of movement and make sure that you're watching so you don't hurt yourself. So he was like, always change it up so that the brain stays involved and engaged. I thought the mirrors were there so I could look at my fat ass when I'm trying to, when I was trying to no, lose weight. they're there so you could check out people that, you know, you were like... Other people's fat asses. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. It's like the worst thing to have in a gym, I think. Oh, when I first started going, you start looking at yourself like, "Oh my God!" And then you look at everybody else looking at themselves. It's gotta be, <laughs> unless you're fit. No, well, no, it's a you, joke. I know. If you get into that mindset, it certainly yeah. is. I mean, I'm not a big fan of mirrors. I'm like, whatever, you know. Yeah. It is what it is. But yeah, you know. So routine, 
in some ways is good and changing it up is also good it depends and and again everybody everyone each individual has trained themselves how to use their brain differently and i was telling you before i watched that documentary two hour documentary on how the brain functions and they hooked up two people to uh, these electrodes that monitor the temperature of the brain and the electromagnetism and they, just, they said okay we're going to give you a math problem and one of them instantly his brain started just burning like ah math no you know? i know the feeling and the other one was just like no oh, okay just burning all nice and cool little blue spots on his brain and then they gave him that simple math and like because the one who already had this fear of math or hated math or whatever or maybe it was mm -hmm. relative to school hate school you know, it was just burning so hardcore that by the end of the, this interview and by the end of this, these little, just simple little tasks, mm -hmm. he was just stressed out. Whereas the oh, other yeah. guy who somehow trained himself to move more efficiently, you know, was like, yeah, whatever. That's like the placebo one I watched. I think it was on, it was a TED Talks. I think I posted it on the Facebook group for Up and In It, but the, uh, what, the, what they did is they got this milkshake and it's the exact same milkshake and they put high calories on it and they actually hooked up to people's bodies. People's molecular, their, their chemical structure in their body changed because of what they thought that this was. So that people actually gained weight, got fat, got, they started to develop fat in their bodies and they said they went and labeled it different. They waited six months later and said, here's a uh, one, it tastes exactly the same, we formulated it, but this one doesn't have all the fats in it. Mm. People's weights actually went fucking down. Yeah, that makes sense. Jesus, like what is... The, the, the mentality of yeah. minimalism, whatever you're doing in your life is so powerful. Yeah, mental but I guess training. The organization of that is what we're speaking of. Is I think that's there's just so much that we that doesn't take consideration that that we don't consider that we take for granted. Take for granted, and we don't really put much attention on it when it's so important. And I think that placebo effect, the mentality, is everything in the organization. You want to get out of what you're doing and into something that you want. You've got to. You got to change the, those mentals, man. It's not just physical. Yeah. And and like, what are some things you could say? I mean, about like spiritually, I think your energy and everything by being organized and and when I say organized, putting attention on those things and prioritizing. And prioritizing, yeah. Mm -hmm. And using ritualistic patterns, so maybe on, on things like that. I think it goes beyond, like I said, monetary and physical and, and all that it goes in the spiritual. I mean, and ricochets off, I think, into uh, mass consciousness. Well, like the Buddhists say, an action is only as pure as the motive from which mm -hmm. it came. So if you decide to change something in your life, quit smoking or start smoking, or you decide to change your eating habits or your exercise or whatever it is, what's your motive to do it? You know, like to me, when I started working out, exercising, walking and everything, it was because I, I got tired of not feeling well. Mm -hmm. I wanted to feel better and I understood that it was an efficient way to help my mind that as I was walking, I was picturing different things. I was noticing, you know, the trees, flowers, you get away from your house, you get away from everything around you and you're in a different world for a minute. So it was an efficient way to not only get exercise, but to think about why am I exercising? And little yeah. by little, I started feeling better and better. And then next thing I knew like, oh, that's weird. My pants are fitting different. My mm -hmm. clothes are fitting different. I'm losing weight. Oh, nice. That was like, the icing on the cake but it wasn't the cake yeah. whereas for me if it's like oh I'm worried about what everybody thinks of me physically what I look like that's not enough motivation I'm like eh yeah. screw it I don't care yeah. I'm eating that pizza <laughs> <laughs> that pizza looks way better oh uh, yeah it yeah, loves so, me and I love it so yeah mental attitude about anything is uh, is key everywhere with relationships with relationships with money your life you know when you change the way you view things it's like there's a good saying to change what you're looking at, change what you're looking as. Mm -hmm. So when you're in control of your life and you and you choose things, a better way to care for yourself, a happier way to live your life, a more playful way, you know, like taking on new things, like I always wanted to play a musical instrument, but I'm too busy. I thought to myself at one point, I'm like, I got a piano and it's sitting there and I just don't have time to learn how to play the piano. And I went, no, no, uh-uh. I'm, not, get, I'm letting you, not letting you get away with that. I, was, I got a book, and I told myself, if you can make it to a doctor's appointment, a dentist appointment, chiropractic, whatever, you can set an appointment with yourself if it's that important to you to do this. And so I did. Every Wednesday at 9 o'clock, 
you're going to work for one hour, learn some new chords, and then every morning for at least a half an hour, practice those chords so that a week from now, next Wednesday, you can incorporate new things. That's what I'm looking now. You gotta start. Yeah. The whole talking things is blah, 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 blah. Get started, start doing something, even if it's just a nudge in the direction of something that you want for the future. But again, if you nudge yourself in a playful way and in a way that you realize benefits you, mm -hmm. it doesn't become so much work and drudgery and people, you say, oh, you're so lucky you love to work out. I'm like, no, that was a decision. Yeah. I decided this is what I need. I got a body and it needs to be cared for and it has high demand on it. I was a massage therapist and you know, people needed me to be well. My family needed me to be well. And more than that, I needed me to be well. Yeah. So every time I'd go and do something physically, it was like, yay. I just did something cool for myself. Thank mm -hmm. yourself, you know. Mm, awesome. <laughs> As opposed to, you know what? Get your fat ass off the couch and get busy. You know, you look like shit. Yeah. Get out there and lose weight so you look better naked. It's like, Argh. So your motivation, the key to motivation, it has a lot to do with it. And I guess that's what we're trying to say is catch the fever. Yeah. What it feels like. Like right now, okay, I have to go to work. I have to do this small job, which is cool. What I'm excited about isn't the work, but I get to see people I know and mm -hmm. they become friends. You know, when I had my little succulent business, I started from scratch. You know, that was the last of my plants before I left. I got to plant for them and they're like, oh, you get to come see your babies, you know, because they were, they were my babies. Yeah. So that I get to go and see my friends, see the garden I planted and all this sort of stuff. And, oh, that's right. I have to do that work thing. Yeah. You know, so I try to look at it that way. It's an opportunity as opposed to, you know, responsibility. Yeah, it's just changing your mentality and getting on the simplicity, whatever that means to each individual. Yep. No religion, no expectations, no beating yourself self up about it. I think that's where people might get stuck though, is that they're looking at, well, I like the minimalism thing, but it's not everything I, you know, they don't even want to try because it's like, well, it's, it's minimalism. It's like, well, no, it's got different parts and components to it. Yeah. Like you don't have to be anything, do anything, just yeah. get out there and grab from everything. And Well, it's like when I was, when I first began to thin out all the things I owned and I was an artist, I had two full studios mm -hmm. of everything. I mean, I'm insane. I was doing stained glass and pottery and just I'm everything glad in I didn't between. have to say that. Yeah, totally insane. Yeah. Like, what the heck, you know, that, and on top of that, own my own business. I mean, just stuff for days and days and days and days, right? And at first, it was difficult to get rid of some things, but what I did is change my mental attitude. Like, where I lived in Oregon was pretty secluded. Mm -hmm. So, pretty impossible to have yard sales and everything out. You know, that just wasn't going to work. I'm like, you're just going to have to give this stuff to the thrift store. Give it away. And so what I did is I started realizing my attachment and I went, you know what, send it off like a gift. Yeah. I mean, I had a book collection, a library to die for. I just was like, give it to the thrift store, bless it with the thought that somebody who was, you know, really wanted this book or didn't even realize they wanted this book finds it at a really cheap price and is like, oh, oh my gosh, I get to take this home and read it. Yeah. And then that book might travel. So I made sure I wrote notes and I'm like, my name and where I lived and like that, you know, I hope this book finds you and blesses you with inspiration and you enjoy as much as I did, you know, kisses mm -hmm. and stars. Some of them, I even put my phone number and said, if you ever have any comments or yeah. put my phone number and I've gotten phone calls back. Nice. You know, so a lot of it is like, what is your attitude about the things you own? And some things, I mean, it still hurts. Some things that have been lost and some things that have been stolen, you know, like things I could have used, but it's is what is the way some, it goes. So there's some stuff that bothers me with minimalism is like that I look at is you want to if you're fixing things if you're a throwaway society you know if you want to buy things like that or if you want to improve your life there's so many tools and things that you can utilize and I don't I'm offset by that the whole white room and you know just the least amount of stuff it doesn't make sense I mean I know that that there's people who like they don't even need a bike they're like they can walk to it, their job mm. um, they can go and buy groceries and everything but I still see this as contributing like going and buying your your food at the grocery store if it's from the the uh, masters that's doing harm to the planet and everything yeah it, you're what difference are you making your lower carbon footprint and you're simplifying your life but to give in here like what would be the answer? And to me, minimalism kind of isn't it because I'd want to produce my own food instead of supporting a system like that. That would be that would be wonderful. But it takes like a lot of space. If everybody did this, 
you know it would take a lot of tools and space and time and I, I don't know I just there's some certain things and just literally fixing your if you owned a home you know you need to fix the plumbing and everything instead of paying somebody else and learning to do these things and tools are not cheap as right. you and I said it takes a person you know decades to save up to buy good stuff it's not gonna break down yeah where do you store these things and how multiple uses are they what if the economy collapses but you've got all these tools you can do gardening plumbing roofing painting because you're not quite compartmentalizing this minimalistic thing you have more options I guess yeah unless I do understand you have residual income and you're traveling the world fuck you you're an asshole <laughs> and I'm up Set, for adoption. And we're up for adoption. Yeah, but. you don't need much. I can give you a massage and cook a really mean meal. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like talking about, you know, these things you own, the things you have, the things you gain. You know, one way of looking at life is, to me, is, is we recognize that the system is difficult to live in and still have a minimalist attitude and care about the planet and care about each other. Yeah. So I think uh, forgiveness, you know, starting with yourself is a big portion of that. Forgive yourself like so many times when, you know, I can't recycle them in a place that doesn't recycle or they don't, you know, you don't take your own bags to the grocery store. You know, I learned, found a lot of that traveling across the U.S. It's like it hasn't, it's not like it is in California, you know, and, and just being like, sorry, planet. Yeah. I hate to throw this away, but they don't recycle here. You know, it just is what it is or even burning trash. Yeah. You know? Like, well, this is what is for now so forgiving myself of going at least I have the conscience to think about it and it's not my first choice but it's what is for right now and the same thing with other people is people being unaware and all these sort of things you know in in what that even means like you talk about the end of the drain pipe yeah you know and trying trying in minimalism to minimize uh, banks for example if you barter you have some tools, you barter work with someone, you do, like for me, I would trade massage for pretty much everything. You know, I needed, needed my haircut, trade a massage. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to comedy school, trade a massage. All the way across the board, so whatever skills you have, barter those, no cash involved, no taxes involved. It's a way to, to simplify and, and not be in the system. Barter yep. your food, cooked food, you know, like, I raised a big family, so it took me a long time to gear down to not making big pots of everything that oh food you know so i would have all this food when we we're living in the trailer park i'd be like knocking on doors you know like do you want some of this casserole or a jar you know, of soup so batching didn't work for you huh? what do you mean doing big batches well no when you're living a minimalist life you have nowhere to yeah. store it for one thing the you saying i would start out small and i'd end up uh, with a big pot of soup so it was like oh well I take a jar over to someone and hey, uh, you want some soup? Yeah. And the next thing I know, you know, two days later, knock knock, cupcake, yeah, or a, or something, you know, bread or or a casserole, you know. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, you just people started bartering food. So it's like, well, if you're cooking for one, you cook for four. Why not share? Then that day, mm -hmm. that person didn't have to cook, or maybe three other people didn't have to cook that much less energy used. Organization again. Yeah. And bartering and trade. Well, and, well, and I'm saying too, the minimalist thing on in a, a larger scope than just your personal life as well, then now that person had the free time and you let them know in advance, like, wow, this is a whole cool thing, that a community thing that could be going on, you know. I will cook every Thursday for you and three other families. I will cook and then you guys don't have to on Thursdays and they will cook for me on Tuesday. So less energy being put out in a lot of ways. It's a way to develop a bit of community, which yeah. again, you know, alters the system, brings that camaraderie and uh, and things amongst us human beings. I mean, that's totally your, yours and my my game mm -hmm. is to alter the systems. Yes, the dentist, everybody, yes. <laughs> to alter the everything system for sure. to just alter it into something, bend it into something that works better for us. And you can just start as small as you want. And again, don't bang yourself over the head about it, but just yeah. change it up, you know? Change up little things and give yourself credit. Like, wow, that's awesome, look what I just did. See, I come from a different perspective where I'm like, I look at a timeline. Like if you want to get off the system and off the wheel, uh, you've got to work really diligently and smart. And it takes, to me, there, my my philosophy and my point of view on it is, is you're, it's going to take you years, if ever, to get out of this system. This system is a monster. Yeah, it, and it's and it a permeates, sucking. It it's a vampire that does not want to die. Yeah. 
Right. So in order to get out, my perspective is you got to be willing to change your mindset, everything, and you're going to put some major, major uh, elbow grease to get out. I'm but I'd like the idea. Who have the same concept. I think like Where for you, you is you're saying like make it fun, and I'm like yeah, make it fun, and like to me that's like the training, almost like preschool. Like it makes you feel good to make an effort towards something and make it playful, and then you're like wow, look what I just did. Yeah. Then you do another one and another one, and it builds up your confidence, and then it starts to you start to see well this is what I want for the rest of my life, and then that's when I look at when you progress to that point though, for, for my my opinion anyways is that you're going to look at the horizon and you're going to go, wow, there's a lot of stuff I'm going to have to change here. Mm -hmm. So to me, the time, in my own experience, I think I've gone the other way where I've worked my fucking ass off and you've gone the other way where you just shed everything off like a lizard skin and went, see ya. Yeah, How's this but, Marla Singer for not making but a big... What, what led me to the minimalism was working my ass off continually yeah. for year after year, seven day weeks, for months. You know, like so many things. Like I didn't just one day go, oh, la, la, la. I think I'll just minimize my life. Yeah. I was like, I either minimize this and change this or die. Yeah. One or the other. Or go crazy. Yeah, go crazy. Because it just, I was hospitalized several times from stress. Yeah. You know, hospitalized. Like they're going, eh, I don't know if you're going to make it. And you know, and there was me going, eh, I don't know if I want to. Yeah. <laughs> to go back to that, <laughs> I'm not sure. Not so much, you know, so again, you know, like what's exciting is when you meet other people of like mindedness who are doing the same thing and you get to share in things and you get to uh, experience that together, you know, which is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for yeah. people who have that same mentality, like, come on, let's do this. Yeah. Let's enjoy life. And, and you can enjoy so much about life without spending a ton of money. Yeah. You don't need money to have a good time. Grab a bunch of buckets and do a drum circle take your socks off your your feet and make puppets mm -hmm. whatever whatever works for the moment well like our, our weekend of camping mm -hmm. that was a hundred and fifty dollars but I right. look at the day we had like four days just about oh, three yeah. days in a, in a morning and the, the fire wonders. and just the relaxation and the healing energy of the ocean and the colors and seeing those corbina run around right. and the dolphin that jumped out of the water the just, sunlight uh, through the water, the emerald yeah. greenness, the, the moonlight, the full moon sparkling on the water. You can go on and on and on for days of, about it. And you could take that same 150 from what I understand. That's probably what it costs to get into Disneyland mm -hmm. for a day. For one Disneyland. person. <laughs> for one person. You know, yeah, it's, it's you know, I mean, and if that's your deal, sweet, yeah. do it. But I guess the, the, the deal is in the end of the day or the end of the month or the year or your life. Don't complain about it then. Yeah. Well, and how do you feel? Yeah, exactly. Are you filled? Yeah. Is your Are you filled? satisfied? If you, as we were talking about that earlier, maybe a possible future podcast is like if you're on your deathbed, what did you leave in your wake? What do you feel about who you are and what you've done? Right. For yourself, for your planet, for your, your family. Right. See, concept of minimalism. That right there, my friends, is a kit to roll your own cigarettes. I know tobacco's bad for me. <laughs> but those of you not watching the podcast it's minimalism and then look at this fancy ashtray uh, uh, star kissed ashtray I have them up mm -hmm. for sale they're like two cents a piece Etsy <laughs> yeah I, for me like I said just taking a walk many times is, is like ugh, it's a little mini vacation gotta make it that way though decision decisions decisions well are we getting towards the end of the cast I think we're at the end yeah. That's a good run. Keep I get all of our going. things. Minimalism, lifealism, livealism. Life of everything you want. Put all the isms in it and make right. a big orgasm. Live it big, live it large, have a good time. Post some stuff to us. Hey, thanks for being here today. If you guys like this sort of thing, consider checking us out on Facebook. We have a private group there at Up and In It. It's private so that we can kick any boohoo, you who's out who want to cause trouble, but it's there for the community so that we all have control over it. That's why it is private. But ask to join and I will approve. I, I approve everybody. Check us out on YouTube, Up and In It. Instagram, where I post every single day to kind of show you guys what an alternative lifestyle looks like. There's some entertainment things there and things you won't find anywhere else. And of course, the podcasts. And as I always say, don't lose your much carry on the fire, human up, live it, love it, own it, and bone it. <laughs>